In the Grade 5 Human Organ Systems Unit, we're going to be looking at the major components of the human body. And these are the respiratory, circulatory, and digestive systems. We also might take a quick look at the skeletal, the muscular, and the nervous systems as well. So we're going to be looking at the location, the structure, and the function of these systems and how they interact within the human body. We're going to be doing this by creating models, uh, using simulations and different types of classroom activities to get an idea of what these systems are about. Now we might not always have diagrams or fancy pictures at our disposal in our classroom, so we're going to see if we can make our own charts uh, with our students' bodies and uh, have those help us in this exploration. A good way to identify and learn about the functions of different anatomical structures is by creating simple models. And this can serve as a good introduction to the Human Organ Systems Unit in Grade 5. And you might want to start off by brainstorming different body parts with your class. And you can list these out on the blackboard or on some chart paper. And that uh, will open up the forum discussion on uh, and about different functions of these and the systems that they are a part of. And once you have those listed out, you might break your uh, classroom into different groups that will be responsible for different systems. They'll become experts on each of these systems. You can let them go to the library, find some books on different themes about their system. They can research that that way, or maybe you can use some computer time where they can go on the internet and look up their systems there. So you want to clearly stipulate what you want them to find, how you want them to find it, what they're going to do with this information, and maybe how long they've got to do that as well. Once your students have completed their research and have become experts on their system, they can create a visual interpretation of their findings by outlining uh, the body of a volunteer within their group. This is a pretty popular way of going about showcasing each of the body parts within a system. You can have your students label these as well. They can get really creative as to how they're going to represent them within the body. You can even use maybe three-dimensional objects or different crafts to represent things. This could be our esophagus in uh, the digestive system here. Now once they've completed this particular task, you can have each group present to the rest of the class, the audience that is, uh, their work here and they can talk about the location, the structure, and the function of each of the parts within the system and how they work as a whole. You might have each of the other groups prepare in advance a question uh, for this group that will be presenting and that will foster some discussion that you can then uh, interject in maybe to clarify and fill in some of the gaps based on some of the items within this unit. Next, we're going to be dealing with matters of the heart. We might start off using an inquiry-driven question such as what happens to the heart when we exercise? Before you start that activity, you might practice taking your pulse with your students. You could do that at the wrist maybe at the neck here, they could count how many beats they feel in 15 seconds, then they can multiply that by four, and that's what will give them their beats per minute. They could also use maybe the inside of a paper towel, sort of the tube there, they could listen to a partner's heartbeat at their chest, they'll be able to hear that quite clearly using this, or if they want to get really creative and mimic the function of a stethoscope, they might cut off the top third of a balloon, and they can place that over the open end of a funnel, and once they've done that, if they attach it to a tube here, they can hear their own heart rate or the heart rate of, of a partner yet again. Now, once you've got that set up, you can maybe come up with some activities that your students might do uh, that would increase their heart rate, and they can measure using a bar graph the difference between their heart rate at rest, and then after maybe a minute of that activity, or three minutes as well. They could do activities such as running, on the spot maybe, they could do jumping jacks or jump rope and they could even try different activities such as working at the computer and see if there's a difference there. You could pair them up and one could be the official timer while the other one does the activity and then they could swap. All sorts of different directions you can go in here and some neat graphs that you can create doing these activities too. When talking about circulation, and in particular arteries, veins, and capillaries, have your students look at the source, that is under their tongue. 
place them in front of a mirror or maybe give them a small mirror like so and a flashlight so they can clearly see under their tongue and they'll see examples of all three. The thick blue lines are the veins and that's the blood that's going back to the heart to get some oxygen. And then there are the thick pink or reddish lines and those are the arteries. They've just come out of the heart with some blood in them. And then there are the hair thin line capillaries that are also placed all over the tongue and there are lots of examples of these uh, in your mouth. Vital capacity. What does that actually mean? Well, that's essentially the volume of air that your lungs will contain. And this experiment gives a really good visual example of what that looks like. You're going to need a basin here with about five centimeters of water in the bottom, a jar filled with water. Now, for smaller students, you could maybe use a two-liter pop bottle, uh, and that's a smaller opening, which is going to be a little bit more helpful in the end. You'll see why. A tube that you're going to fit into that jar, maybe some blocks if you have a larger opening to help hold up your jar, a permanent marker to mark the level of the water when you're uh, starting and finishing, maybe some food coloring to make it a little fun as well. So this experiment is particularly good when examining using the scientific method because you need to keep a number of variables very constant in order to get consistent results time and time again, especially if you're using different trials. So this is a good topic of discussion with your students. Now when you start off, you're going to take that jar, you're going to put your palm or your finger right over the top here, and you're going to reverse it, put it upside down into your basin, submerge it under that level of water, and that water should stay within the jar. You might have to try this a few times to get the hang of it before it works well. Once you've got it in there, you might have it propped up by some blocks if it's a larger opening. You take your tube and you feed it up into the bottom of the jar, up into the opening, and when you blow through it, that air is going to go directly into the jar. Now before you start that, you want to mark that water level, where it's starting at, and you practice a few breaths, and then you blow through the tube, it'll uh, push all that water out of the bottom of the jar, you make sure you mark where that water is, you pull your tube out so it doesn't fill up again with water, and that right there is your vital capacity. While that was a good demonstration for vital capacity, I'm thinking 30 students in a classroom, you want to get everybody trying this experiment in one session, might be tricky with that type of material. So if you have uh, a bucket filled a third full of water, a marker, and a balloon, you can replicate that quite easily in groups maybe within your class. So have your students mark the level of water with their marker, blow their balloon up a few times so it stretches out, and then they can deeply breathe in, fill their balloon up, that represents their lung capacity. You can tie it at the, uh, at the neck here and push it all the way down to the bottom of the bucket, displacing that water till it's over top of the balloon. Take their marker and they can mark that. And that difference in water is going to represent uh, their lung capacity.